Early on in this channel, I put out a video called Leaving Your Legacy, something to that effect. And and I talked about the fact that um, it, it's so easy now with with cell phones and other things to, to create short videos that you can share with your kids and tell your stories. But there are a lot of people who are just not comfortable doing that. They're not comfortable with the technology or they're not comfortable with uh, seeing their, their face on screen or even hearing their own voice. Because trust me, it does not sound like your voice in your head. And so today I want to talk about leaving a legacy part two. If you're one of those people who just don't have the technology know-how to create videos that are like the ones I'm doing, and you are not comfortable doing that to tell your story for your children, there's no, there's no shame in that. There's no harm in that. But there is a way that you can still leave your words behind. I have talked about the fact in a couple of videos that I am uh, writing a book and that book is very personal to me. It's not a book that I expect to sell a lot of copies of. I'll probably give away way more than I sell. But it is a book about my own spiritual journey through life, how I've grown, how I've changed, the mistakes I've made. And, and it is primarily a book, not only a, a catharsis for me, but it's also a book of remembrance for my children and my grandchildren. There is a, a video on my photography channel <laughs> because one, one of the things that I did was I went to Assisi, Italy last year uh, to do some research for the book. The year before that, I had actually thought about going to Assisi and some friends of mine talked me into doing a trial run trip before I made the real trip. And so I made a trip to Rome. It did not go well. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I thought I was going to be arrested in Vatican City. And th I'll put a link to the video in the description below. Uh, but I was very glad that I took that trip because it helped me to understand all the mistakes that I made in international travel so that when I did go to Assisi, it was much easier. But you may not want to write a book either. There is a very simple way for you to tell your story to the generations who follow. And it's on a website that you've probably seen advertisements for. In fact, some of you watching this video may have already used this website. And it's storyworth.com. At storyworth.com, you have several options. It is a paid service, so you don't do it for free. Now, how it works is this. Every week, it sends you a question to answer. Something about the past of your life, something about your childhood. I'll read you a few of those questions in a minute. You have the option to answer that question or choose a different question if it is too painful to talk about or if it just doesn't apply to your life. And there were a few times along the way that I chose a different question. You can write that privately and share it all with your kids when you're finished, or you can do what I did, which was to tell your kids you're doing it and every time I would post an answer, all I had to do was respond to an email. That was it. Just respond to an email. And StoryWorth.com put it in the form of a blog post. And then it would email that blog post to my three daughters. And then if you want to go back and edit it, you can. If you want to change some things, you can. But the post is there. Even now, um, almost three years later, my posts are still there, available for me to do anything that I want to with even today. And then you have the option at the end to continue writing for another year or take what you've written and put it in the form of a book and have that book sent to your children. So what I did was I sent my stories out to my kids every week. Sometimes they read them. Sometimes one of them read them. Sometimes nobody read them because I got notified as to when my children would read the note. And at the end of the year, I bought three books and I wrapped them up and gave them to them as Christmas presents. And I can guarantee you that that book was more valuable 
than anything I could have gone to the store to buy. So let me give you a few examples. Let me let me just pull this up on my phone real quick. I've got something in my eye, so excuse me just a second. I'm not crying yet. Um, just a few of the questions that I answered, and and some of these, they're too personal for me to share uh, the answers to or too personal for me to share in this video. But the very first question I thought was great uh, because I'm I'm a big music fan, and it was, tell me about a song that brings back an interesting memory from your youth. Another question, what were your favorite toys as a child? Did you ever get in trouble in school? What were you like when you were 40? That was a really, really tough one to write. What is your best advice when it comes to raising children? <laughs> Mine was pretty simple. Don't do anything I did. <laughs> and so I, I did want to share one here just so you can kind of see how this goes. Now, I've mentioned that I'm taking my family to Scotland next year. This is a trip I've been planning for three years. This is not something that's just come out of the blue. I've been saving money for this prior to retirement. I've been earning points through the American Express card, as I talked about in a previous video. And so there is a lot of planning that goes on. I've already got hotel rooms booked. You know, we're just kind of watching lights right now, waiting on a couple of passports to be done. In the past, I took my three daughters and each of their husbands and my oldest granddaughter, who was a senior in high school that particular year, we took a trip together. And that's what this question led me to talk about. And the question was, what is one of your favorite trips that you've taken and what made it great? And so I want to share this story with you uh, just so that you can kind of get a feel for what it's like to share your life with your kids. Now, these questions that are asked, these are not questions, most of them at least, are not questions my kids have ever asked. They're not questions I would have sat down around the Thanksgiving table and said, hey, let me, let me tell you about my favorite toy as a child. It just doesn't happen. And so there are pieces of your life your kids will never know unless you're very specific and talking about them, and honest about talking about them. So this question again was, what is your favorite, one, what is one of your favorite trips that you've taken and what made it great? And here's what I wrote. This is a trick question, right? There have been a few really good trips I could talk about. Our family trip to Paso Grill, Florida with Mamma and all the kids was a wonderful time. The trip to Maine to see Sarah and have all of my girls with me was extremely memorable. But there's really only one trip that qualifies as an answer to this question. Us in the UK. I had such a blast just spending 10 months or so preparing for this trip. I'm sure everyone got tired of the latest text or email highlighting more sites to see, food to eat, transportation tips, Airbnb possibilities, and more. And I'll just stop here to say, I'm sure they're getting tired of the same things about the trip to Scotland. <laughs> but I was having a blast. Some of the places we were going to see were things Brittany and Elise had probably seen but forgotten. But the rest of the travelers had never been. And the possibilities of sharing some of my favorite spots in Cambridge and London had me pumped for months. Now, granted, our original travel didn't go quite as planned as some flights were delayed or canceled, and that first night in Cambridge with Elise and Zach and Malia was a bit frazzled as we worried that the rest would be horrendously late or, God forbid, not make it at all. But it was worth the struggle to see the hugs and smiles and tears as everyone arrived at the Cambridge train station the next day. And the picture of Brittany and Elise with their faces buried in each other's shoulders is one picture I will treasure forever. Eating at pubs, walking through King's College Chapel, freezing our behinds off in punt boats, and so much more made the Cambridge part of our trip exceptional for me. But London is London, and it just doesn't get much better than that. 
I have two very vivid memories that made this trip worth every hardship, every long mile, every frazzled moment, and every dime spent. First, Les Miserables. It is my favorite musical theater production of all time, bar none. And to share that with the entire family on the West End, just outside of Chinatown near Soho, well, I can only say that it may never be any better than that. Just sharing the emotional journey of the story of grace over law is amazing. But to share it with some who had never heard of the program before, or never seen it, or had no idea what it was about, that was priceless. And the second would be my decision to go to Madame Tussauds with Elise and Malia. And to be honest, it isn't a place I would have gone to on my own. It's one of those been there, done that things for me. But it was so incredibly important to Malia that it became incredibly important for me to share it with her. And I was not disappointed. For her to get her picture taken with Robert Downey Jr., Spider-Man, or Captain America was reward enough. But when she turned a corner and saw her favorite boy band of all time, my entire trip to the UK was made more than amazing as I watched her break out into tears. I don't know if we will ever have another trip for all of us. I certainly hope we will. But I can promise you that if this is the last one, my life was made complete. Now, I don't share that story to talk to you about what a wonderful trip we've had or the fact that, you know, I'm such a great dad. I share that story because these are things your kids, your grandkids, will cherish forever. You having the opportunity to share your story. I'm going to leave a link to the story worth in the description below. It is not a referral link. I get nothing from this at all. It's just something that I feel is important if we are going to truly leave our legacy. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.